Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Marcio here. This is a continuation of the previous video about how to write a web application using Python and Flask. And it's just a quick recap here that we have done in the previous video. We have created a new folder, we have set up a new virtual environment to isolate our application dependencies. We have installed Flask inside our application and we have also written an application.py or app.py. That's going to be the main file that we are going to code to create our application. We have also created one folder for holding the templates. Now we're going to continue our quest and we'll be adding the templates in our application or the pages in our application. So again, we'll be using Twitter Bootstrap. As you guys can see here, this is the Twitter Bootstrap website. And there is an option to just go for the minimal version of Twitter Bootstrap, where they only have a few tags here. But we'll be taking advantage of the examples they give us. And I'm going to use this example here, which is a stick footer with fixed nav bar. And the idea here is to create a master template or a layout template where we are going to have everything that we have here in this page, but not the body here, because the body will be filled in by every single page that we want to render. For example, if you wanted to render a page to add a new post, then Flask will gra grab that child template and embed inside the layout template here. And in the end, it will present the whole information for us. So that's a really a lifesaver and time saver as well, because we don't have to repeat ourselves recreating the page over and over again. We can simply reuse that template and Flask will take care of that for us. And for that, the only thing we need is to simply come here and inspect the source code and we can simply copy the whole source code and add it to the project. So I have already done that because I have cleaned up my template here and I'm going to create here a new file called layout.html inside the templates folder. And I'm going to copy the content of the file here, which I'm going to be showing to you guys right now. This code here, the page is exactly the same page besides a few modifications I have done. And the first one was here, the CSS now for bootstrap. I'm grabbing from the CDN. If you guys take a look at the original page, you guys can see that the CSS was done from their local folder, wherever it is located. But now I don't have access to that folder, so I'm just changing to look into a CDN. Next step is to add a body block here because we want to replace the body block with whatever page we are rendering at that time. So this is the content block inside the body. Last thing here was to point the JavaScript that Twitter Bootstrap uses to a CDN as well. Same thing that happened to the CSS happens to the JavaScript. If you guys can see here, so it takes the JavaScript from the same path it was getting the CSS, which we don't have access, but we can call from the CDN. And that's all we have to do. So we have our main templates here in place. Now we can start adding the remaining routes. And the first route we're going to add is a route to present that add posts page. And I'm going to say app.get. It's going to be an HTTP get method. And it's going to be posts slash add. And we have to define a function. So get add post page. And we have to return that page. We'll say return render template. And then the template name. That's going to be add post.html. See how this function here is uh, is marked. That's because we haven't imported that code yet. And we're going to do it right now. Just go to the top of the file, as you guys can see here, and also import render template. Yep, there we go. We are all good to go. Next step here is to create the add post HTML file. I'm going to now also copy the contents of the file that I have done previously, and I'm going to explain what is a snippet of code means. First thing we have to tell Flask that we are going to use that layout HTML as our base template. We do that by saying extends layout HTML. Next step is to tell Flask, now I want to override the block called content. As you guys remember here in the layout, we have a block called content. 
So Flask will grab whatever it is in the ads post page and will insert inside that block inside the layout, ultimately present everything to the user, which is awesome. So we're saying, okay, just replace the block content in the layout with whatever I have in here. And super means that, okay, Flask, do whatever you have to do in the template page, and then come back here and grab this content. We're telling them, okay, just add this H1 and add a form, which we post to slash posts. And we'll have two fields here, title and description. Title is a text field, description is a text area. And lastly here, a button simply to submit the page. After that, we are good to go. We can now try our application. Let me go back here to the command line. And we can use a trick here from Flask, which is to run in debug mode. We need to tell Flask run slash slash debug. It will allow Flask to reload the page once we make any change to the application.python. And now I can just call that page. So just testing here, our root folder or root path is still working, so all good. Now if I call posts.add, I can see my page here. Let me simply take that crazy zoom. Now we have the page here and we can start playing around with the page. Testing my first post and of course, if I try to hit the create button, that's gonna give me an error because I don't have the action to handle that form post, which we're going to be adding right now. Let's go back to the Visual Studio Code and then we'll go back to app.py and now we're going to create a new handler for that path. It's gonna be um, app.post and that's gonna be slash posts. As you guys can see, the same action we have here in the page. Let me minify that, slash posts, and we have slash posts here. So I'm gonna have here a function, create post, and now what I have to do is I have to simply grab all the request parameters from the form and then do whatever I need to do in here. Yeah, now I got the, the fields here with request.form.get, that's a an object from Flask, and I also have to import request at the top of the file. Now it's all good here, it's not complaining anymore. Another thing I need here is to, I'm gonna assign a an ID, it's gonna be a sequence to each post, Again, because we, my intention here is to hold these posts in memory, I'm not gonna go for a database at this point in time. So I just wanna hold them in memory. So I'm gonna create a new uh, ID for them. I'm gonna call a new function here, get next row, which I'm still going to create. So it doesn't exist at the moment. Next step here is to simply create a new structure here to hold my whole post. It's gonna be an item here or a dictionary that's gonna hold my new post. And let me call it item. I have here an ID, the title and the description. And now I can simply go and save that information somewhere. I'm gonna do the saving in memory. I'm gonna define here a global variable here called mock database, which is gonna be a dictionary as well. So because I want to hold that information in memory. A dictionary is simply a key value pair that we can manipulate and that's gonna uh, do all the work we need for this sample application here. Next step here is to add that item into the dictionary and the index is gonna be the ID. So I will associate that item ID to that item and then we can search or we can retrieve that item quickly. We are good to go here. So we are now handling that form post. We can just go back to the web page and go and add again. So that's gonna be my first post. This is it. And then I can hit create. And of course, it's gonna fail because I don't have that next row method yet or that function, which I'm gonna create right now. Get next row. And then we need a global variable here because we're going to increment that number over and over again once the user creates a post. I'm gonna define here a variable called row ID, which I'm gonna use as a global variable. Next thing here is to create the, the body of the function. So I'm defining that variable as a global. Now I'm incrementing that variable and returning the next variable or the next ID. Of course, uh, it's not suited for production systems. That's only for the test here. Many databases, they are able to give each row or each item 
a, a new UID or a new sequence as well. So that's only for our test here. And I believe you're good to go. Back to the page here, posts slash add, and then my first post, and then create. And the next error here is because we need to return something from that function. Whenever the function ends, we need to return a result. And that may be a page, a text, or JSON or anything else. In this case, I'm gonna go back there and I'm going to return a string saying success. Or could be anything else. And slash h1. And now if we go back there again and say add first post, and then once you say create, we get the result back. Okay? I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. And also Keep an eye on the channel because I'm gonna get you guys the next video because we're gonna be wrapping up and summing up things, okay? See you guys next time.